we shall now discuss on module 3 of chapter 8. Module 3 is concerned with the convergence of a sequence of elements and convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators. Here convergence of a sequence namely strong convergence, weak convergence of a sequence and also strong convergence, non-convergence, weak convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators. Also we shall study on some properties of sequences of operators and sequences of elements on an underlying nonlinear space. Let us now start the slide presentation of module 3 of chapter 8. Let us now start module 3. The title of module 3 is strong convergence and weak convergence of a sequence of operators. Let us take some definitions. A sequence xn in a nonlinear space capital X over a field capital K is said to be weakly convergent to an element x belongs to capital X if for every f belongs to x star that means for every functionals f, fxn goes to fx as n tends to infinity and written as xn goes to x weakly. Let us take another definition. A sequence xn in a nonlinear space capital X over a field capital K is said to be strongly convergent to an element x belongs to capital X if norm xn minus x tends to 0 as n tends to infinity and written as xn goes to x strongly. Let us take a theorem in this regard. If a sequence elements xn belongs to capital X such that xn converges to x weakly and x belongs to capital X, then the weak limit x of sequence xn is unique. Every subsequence of sequence xn in capital X is convergent weakly to small x. And number 3, the sequence of norm xn is norm bounded. Now we shall take the proof one by one. Let xn converges to x weakly and xn converges to y weakly belongs to capital X where x is not equal to y. Now x minus y is not equal to 0 vector. So by application of Hahn-Banach theorem, there exists a function all f belongs to x star such that f of x minus y is equal to norm x minus y with norm f equal to 1. Since xn converges to x weakly and xn converges to y weakly for every f belonging to x star, fxn converges to fx and fxn converges to fy as n tends to infinity. As the field of scalars is house drop, we see that fx equal to fy. So f of x minus y equal to 0, that means norm x minus y equal to 0 imply x equal to y, which is a contradiction to our assumption. Hence the weak limit x of sequence xn is unique. Now we shall give a proof of 2. As xn converges to x weakly, then for every f belonging to x star, fxn converges to fx as n tends to infinity. So every subsequence of sequence fxn is convergent and converges to fx. Let fxnk be a subsequence of sequence fxn. So fxnk converges to fx as k tends to infinity. That means xnk converges to x weakly. Now we shall give a proof of 3. As xn converges to x weakly for every f belonging to x star, fxn converges to fx as n tends to infinity. So modulus of fxn less or equals to m suffix small f for some constant mf greater than 0 because every convergent sequence is bounded. Let capital C from capital X to X double star be a canonical mapping defined by Cx equal to capital Fx. Where capital Fx belongs to x double star satisfying norm Fx equal to norm x. So for every f belongs to x star, we have Fxf equal to Fx. Take a sequence of functionals Gn belonging to x double star such that Gnf equal to Fxn. So modulus of Gnf less or equals to mf, that is modulus of Gnf less or equals to m suffix small f for every f belongs to x star. As x star is complete and sequence gnf over capital x star is a bounded sequence of scalars, so by uniform boundedness principle norm gn is bounded. But norm gn equal to norm xn, so sequence norm xn is bounded and hence the proof is complete. 
Let us take another theorem. Let capital X be a nonlinear space, then the following statements holds. That means strong convergence implies weak convergence of a sequence in capital X. Number 2, if dimension of X is finite, then weak convergence and strong convergence of a sequence in X coincide. Now, let us take a proof. Let sequence X n be a sequence in capital X and let X n converges to X strongly and X belongs to capital X. Let F belongs to X star. Now, modulus of F X n minus F X equal to mod f of x n minus x because f is linear. As f is bounded, so modulus of f of x n minus x less or equals to norm f into norm x n minus x which goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. This is true for all f belongs to x star, hence x n converges to x weakly. But the converse is not true. Let us take an example x is equal to sequence space L 2. So, its conjugate space x star is equal to L 2. Let E k where k equal to 1, 2 and so on be a Schroeder basis of capital X where E k equal to 0, 0, 1 where 1 is in the kth place comma 0, comma 0 dot dot dot. Let X belongs to L 2 where X equal to sequence of elements j 1, j 2 dot dot j n comma dot 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 with norm of X equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity modulus of j i square to the power half which is less than infinity take x belongs to L 2, then x equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity alpha k e k, where alpha k's are scalars. Let f belongs to x star, so f of x equal to f of sigma k equal to 1 to infinity alpha k e k, which is equal to sigma k equal to 1 to infinity alpha k f of e k by applying the linearity of f which is again equals to sigma k equal to 1 to infinity alpha k gamma k, where gamma k equal to f of e k. Note that gamma k belongs to L 2, that, if, that means the sequence of scalars gamma 1, gamma 2, dot dot gamma n, dot 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 belongs to L 2, where sigma k equal to 1 to infinity modulus of gamma k square is finite. So, gamma k tends to 0 as k tends to infinity. So, f of e k goes to 0 as k tends to infinity. This means f of e k goes to f 0 because f 0 equal to 0 as k tends to infinity, which implies that e k converges to 0 vector weakly. For any two positive integers n and m with n not equal to m, we see that norm of e n minus e m square equal to 2, which implies that norm of e n minus e m equal to root 2, which is greater than 0. So, sequence e n is not a Cauchy sequence in capital X. Hence, E n does not converge to 0 vector strongly. Let us take a remark. In an infinite dimensional nonlinear space capital X, weak convergence of a sequence in capital X does not necessarily imply a strong convergence. Note that strong convergence of a sequence in a nonlinear space implies its weak convergence. Since dimension of X is finite, say dimension of X equal to k, take E 1 comma e 2 comma dot 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 e k be a basis vectors of capital X. Let x n belonging to capital X and x belongs to capital X such that x n equal to alpha 1 n e 1 plus alpha 2 n e 2 plus dot 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 plus alpha k n e k and x equal to alpha 1 e 1 plus alpha 2 e 2 plus dot 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 plus alpha k e k. Let f 1 comma f 2 comma dot dot f n belongs to x star such that f j e n equal to 0, if j not equal to n, f j e n equal to 1, if j equal to n. So, f j x n is equal to alpha j n and f j x equal to alpha j. Let x n converges to x weakly. So, f j x n converges to f j x as n tends to infinity for j equal to 1, 2 up to k. This implies that alpha j n goes to alpha j as n tends to infinity. Let capital M is equal to max of norm E j, where j is taken from 1 to n. Let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary. So, there exists a positive integer n belongs to set of natural number such that modulus of alpha j n minus alpha j less than epsilon by m into small k for all n get or equals to capital N and for each j equal to 1, 2 up to k. 
now norm x m minus x equal to norm sigma j equal to 1 to k alpha j and e j minus sigma j equal to 1 to k alpha j e j which is equal to norm sigma j equal to 1 to k alpha j n minus alpha j into e j which is less or equals to sigma j equal to 1 to k norm alpha j n minus alpha j into e j which is equal to sigma j equal to 1 to k modulus of alpha j n minus alpha j into norm e j which is less than small k into epsilon by m into small k into capital M which is equal to epsilon for all n get out equals to capital N. This implies x n converges to x strongly. Let us take definition in respect of bounded linear functionals. Let capital X be a norm linear space and let f n be a sequence of bounded linear functionals belonging to x star, where x star being the conjugate space of capital X. Take f naught belongs to x dash, then f n converges to f naught weakly. If for all x belongs to capital X, f n x converges to f naught x in norm. Now, in this connection, we take a theorem. If f n converges to f naught weakly, then sequence of norm f n is bounded. Let us take another theorem. Let sequence f n belongs to x dash be such that f n converges to f weakly where f belongs to x dash then sequence norm f n is bounded. Number 2, f n x converges to f x for arbitrary x belonging to a subset G of capital X for which the linear combination of its elements are everywhere dense in capital X. And conversely, if 1 and 2 holds then f n converges to f weakly. Let us take a proof. If f n converges to f weakly, then 1 follows from previous theorem and 2 follows from the definitions. Let 1 and 2 holes. Let x belongs to capital X. Let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary. Choose x naught belongs to capital G such that norm x minus x naught is strictly less than epsilon by 2. Now, modulus of f n x minus f x equal to modulus of f n x minus f n x naught plus f n x naught minus f x naught plus f x naught minus f x just slight adjustment of f n x naught and f x naught which is less or equals to modulus of f n x minus f n x naught plus modulus of f n x naught minus f x naught plus modulus of f x naught minus f x. This is equation number 1. As sequence norm f n is bounded there exists a constant capital M greater than 0 such that norm f n less or equals to capital M for all n. Also modulus of f n x naught minus f x naught goes to 0 as n tends to infinity by the assumption 2. So from equation 1 we have modulus of f n x minus f x less or equals to norm f n into norm x minus x naught plus modulus of f n x naught minus f x naught plus norm f into norm x naught minus x which is less or equals to m into epsilon by 2 plus 0 plus norm f into epsilon by 2 as n tends to infinity, which is again equals to capital M into epsilon by 2 plus norm f into epsilon by 2. As epsilon greater than 0 is arbitrary, it follows that f n x converges to f x for all x belongs to capital X, implying that f n converges to f weakly. We take another theorem. Let capital X be a separable Banach space then every bounded sequence of functionals f n belonging to x dash contains a weakly convergent subsequence of sequence f n. Let us take a proof as sequence of functionals f n belong to x dash are bounded without loss of generality we can take norm f n less or equals to 1 for all n. Let capital E equal to sequence x1, comma x2, comma dot 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 xn, comma dot dot be a countable set in capital X which is everywhere dense in capital X. Now sequence fn x1 is bounded sequence of scalars. So sequence fn x1 has a convergent subsequence say f11 x1, f21 x1, comma dot dot fn1 x1, comma dot dot dot. Select the sequence f11, f21, comma f31, comma dot dot fn1, comma dot 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 of fn such that 
sequence f n 1 x 2 is a bounded sequence of scalars. So, by similar argument sequence f n 1 x 2 has a convergent subsequence say f 1 2 x 2 comma f 2 x 2 x 2 comma dot dot f n 2 x 2 comma dot 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 dot. This follows that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. Again, sequence of functionals f12, comma f22, comma dot 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 fn2 is a subsequence of sequence fn1, and hence is a subsequence of sequence fn. And this process can be continued. Continuing in this way, we can get a subsequence f1n xn, comma f2n xn, comma dot 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 fn n xn, comma dot 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 of the earlier subsequence f1 n minus 1 xn comma f2 n minus 1 xn comma dot dot f n n minus 1 xn comma dot dot dot. Thus, we get a subsequence of sequence f n like f1 1 f f2 1 dot 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 f n 1 dot 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 f1 2 f2 2 dot 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 f n 2 dot dot dot. Continuing in this way, we get f1 n comma f2 n comma dot dot f n n comma dot 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 and so on. Consider the diagonal elements f 1 1 f 2 2 dot 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 f n n where each of its elements are convergent at each x k k equal to 1 2 and so on. Let x belongs to capital X choose x k belongs to capital E such that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a positive integer n such that norm of x minus x k less than epsilon by 3 for all n get or equals to capital N. Now, for n equal to 1 comma 2 comma and dot dot modulus of f n n x k minus f n n x equal to modulus of f n n x k minus x less or equals to norm f n n into norm x k minus x, which is less or equals to norm x k minus x, which is less than epsilon by 3 for all k get or equals to n. Since norm f n n less or equals to 1. Now, modulus of f n n x minus f m m x less or equals to modulus of f n n x minus f n n x k plus modulus of f n n x k minus f m m x k plus f m m x k minus f m m x with mod. Now, sequence of functionals f n n x k is convergent and hence f n n x k is a Cauchy sequence of scalars. So, for epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer n 1 such that modulus of f n n x k minus f m x k is strictly less than epsilon by 3 whenever n comma m is greater or equals to capital N 1. Choose n not equal to max of capital N comma N 1. So, from equation 3, we get modulus of f n n x minus f m m x is strictly less than epsilon for all n comma m greater or equals to n naught. Showing that sequence f n n x is a Cauchy sequence of scalars and since scalar field is complete, let f n n x goes to alpha say for x belongs to capital X. Define a function g from x to k, k being the field of scalars such that g x equal to alpha for x belongs to capital X. So, f n n x goes to g x where g x equal to limit n of f n n x clearly g belongs to x star and this follows that f n n goes to g weakly this completes the proof. Up to this in this module we have learned so many properties on convergence of a sequence of elements on a nonlinear space. Now, we shall discuss on convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators. We shall define strong convergence, non convergence, uniform convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators and we shall study on such convergence of bounded linear operators. With this, we are now going to study some further properties on convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators. We shall now discuss on strong convergence and weak convergence and uniform convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators. Now, we take some definitions. Let capital X and capital Y be two nonlinear spaces over the same field of scalars capital K. Let sequence T n belongs to B D L X Y. That means, B D L X Y is the collection of all bounded linear operators from X to Y and let T belongs to B D L X Y. Then T n converges to T in norm if for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer capital N such that norm T n minus T is less than epsilon for all n greater or equals to capital N. Let us take another definition. 
let sequence Tn belongs to BDL XY and let T belongs to BDL XY, then Tn converges to T weakly written as Tn goes to T weakly. If for all X belongs to capital X, Tnx converges to Tx weakly. That means for every Y dash belongs to capital Y dash, Y dash Tnx converges to Y dash Tx. The sequence of bounded linear operators Tn belongs to BDL XY is said to be strongly convergent if for every X belongs to capital X, sequence Tnx converges in Y. Let sequence Tn belongs to BDL XY and T belongs to BDL XY, then Tn is called strongly convergent to T. That is sequence Tn is called strongly convergent to an element capital T. If for X belongs to capital X, the sequence of elements Tnx converges to Tx and we write Tn converges to T strongly. Note that non-convergence of a sequence of operators Tn belongs to BDL XY to T belongs to BDL XY implies is strong convergence because norm Tnx minus Tx is equal to norm Tn minus T into X which is less or equals to norm Tn minus T into norm X which goes to 0 at n tends to infinity. Let us take a definition. Let sequence Tn belongs to BDL XY and let T belongs to BDL XY, then sequence Tnx converges to Tx uniformly for all X belongs to capital X such that norm X less or equals to 1. If for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer capital N such that norm Tnx minus Tx less than epsilon whenever N is greater or equals to capital N. Written as Tnx goes to Tx uniformly. Alternatively, we say uniform convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators Tn belongs to BDL XY in norm x less or equals to 1 written as Tn converges to T uniformly. If sequence of elements Tn belongs to BDL XY be such that sequence of operators Tn belongs to BDL XY uniformly for all x belongs to capital X satisfying norm x less or equals to 1, then Tnx converges to Tx uniformly for all x belongs to capital X with norm x less or equals to 1. The proof looks like this. Now, norm Tnx minus Tx equal to norm Tn minus T into x less or equals to norm Tn minus T into norm x. Let x belongs to capital X such that norm x less or equals to 1. So, norm Tnx minus Tx goes to 0 as n tends to infinity, implying that Tnx converges to Tx uniformly for all x belongs to capital X satisfying norm x less or equals to 1. Let us take another theorem. If sequence of bounded linear operators Tn belongs to BDL XY and capital T belongs to BDL XY be such that Tnx converges to Tx uniformly for all x belongs to capital X such that norm x less or equals to 1, then Tn converges to T in norm. The proof goes below. Let x belongs to capital X be such that norm x less or equals to 1. So, for any epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer capital N belonging to set of natural numbers N such that norm Tnx minus Tx less than epsilon whenever N is greater or equals to capital N. Let us take an element y equal to x by norm x where x is not equal to 0 vector. So, norm y equal to 1. So, Tny goes to Ty uniformly implies norm Tny minus Ty less than epsilon for all n greater or equals to capital N. This implies norm Tn x by norm x minus T x by norm x less than epsilon for all n greater or equals to capital N. This implies norm Tnx minus Tx over norm x less than epsilon for all n greater or equals to capital N. This implies norm Tn minus T into x less than epsilon into norm x for all n greater or equals to capital N. So, supremum of norm of Tn minus Tx and supremum is taken over all such elements having norm x less or equals to 1, this less or equals to epsilon for all n greater or equals to capital N. So, norm Tn minus T less or equals to epsilon for all n greater or equals to capital N implying that Tn converges to T in norm. Let us take a theorem. 
let sequence of boundary linear operator T n belongs to B D L X Y and let T belongs to B D L X Y. If T n converges to T strongly, then T n converges to T uniformly. Let T n converges to T strongly, let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary. So, there exists a positive integer capital N such that norm T n minus T is less than epsilon for all n greater or equals to capital N. Let y dash belongs to capital y dash take x belongs to capital X, where y dash is the collection of all bounded linear functionals over y. Now, modulus of y dash T n x minus y dash T x equal to modulus of y dash T n x minus T x, which is less or equals to norm y dash into norm T n x minus T x, which is again less or equals to norm y dash into norm T n minus T into norm x, which goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. This implies that y dash T n x converges to y dash T x, this implies T n x converges to T x weakly, this implies that T n converges to T weakly. Thus, we have uniform convergence in norm x less or equals to 1 implies non-convergence, that means it is strong convergence, this implies weakly convergence. In this connection, we take a remark, but weakly convergence of sequence of bounded linear operators belongs to BDLXY does not imply its non-convergence. For this, we set an example. Let x equal to small l2 define Tn from x to x by Tn x equal to 0, 0, 0, comma xi n plus 1, comma xi n plus 2, comma dot dot dot, where x equal to xi 1, comma xi 2, comma dot dot xi n, comma dot 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 belongs to l2. Clearly, for each positive integer n, Tn is linear. Now, norm T n x equal to sigma i equal to n plus 1 to infinity modulus of j i i square to the power half, which is less or equals to sigma i equal to n to infinity modulus of j i i square to the power half, which is equal to norm x, implying that T n belongs to B d L x y. Since sigma i equal to 1 to infinity modulus of j i i square is finite, this implies that j i n goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, T n x equal to 0, 0, 0 up to 0 up to nth place 0 comma xi n plus 1 comma xi n plus 2 comma dot dot dot. This goes to all coordinates 0 which is equal to 0 vector at n tends to infinity. Hence, T n converges to 0 operator weakly on x. Let us take an element x equal to up to nth place 0 comma xi n plus 1 comma xi n plus 2 comma dot 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 belongs to L2 such that norm x less or equals to 1. Then T n x equal to x. So, norm T n equal to 1 for all n, but norm T n minus 0 operator equal to norm T n which is equal to 1 implying that T n does not converges to 0 operator in norm. So, by previous theorem it follows that sequence of bounded linear operators T n does not converge uniformly to the 0 operator. Up to this, in this module, we have learned convergence of a sequence of elements in a nonlinear space. Also, we have learned some properties on convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators. We have learned non-convergence, weak convergence and uniform convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators. We have studied some properties on convergence of a sequence of bounded linear operators. With this, we now come to an end of this module 3 of chapter 8.